We shall be reading from First letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, and verse 16. Chapter 10, verse 16. First letter to the Corinthians, 10, 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we though many are one bread and one body, for we are all partake of that one bread. Observe Israel, after the flesh, are not those who eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? Who am I saying then? What am I saying then? That an idol is anything, or what is offered to the idols is anything, rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice are sacrificed to demons and not to God, and I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord, the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? And then we'll read from chapter 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread, and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak, and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. You see, my brethren, Blessing in which God has prepared for each one of us can end up as a curse if it is not done by the guidance of God and in the will of God it can end up as a curse. Blessing of God for us to take part in the communion of the body and blood of Christ. This blessing for us to condemn the death of Christ which is perfect blessing and full because, because only Christ's church can condemn the death of Christ. Body and blood of Christ is not a symbol. Through faith we pray and the Lord blesses the bread as Jesus' body and the wine as Jesus' blood. And that's why Apostle Paul assures us that the cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ. It doesn't say it symbolizes the blood. It is the blood. It's amazing to know that we shall eat the body of Christ and we shall drink the blood of Christ. Exactly. Precise. And our Lord says, Whoever eats my body and drinks my blood has life everlasting life and I promise to resurrect him in the last day. If though this happens not according with the word of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, instead of it being a blessing and the most high at that, it will be as condemnation. How important it is what we do for it to be according to the will of God, for God to want it. If we might be going to be blessed, we might end up being at that point for it to be judgment upon us. So important it is for anything we do beforehand, for us to pray. How important it is for it now, for us, to ask the will of God in our lives. It's very important, right now. This moment, not for after, what will I do, where will I go, but now, to ask the will of God, Lord, should I take part in the communion of your body and blood? Should I take part or not? Will it be a blessing for me or judgment? How important our prayer is. How important it is for us to seek the Lord now, not after. When I go home, I will pray, Lord, did I, was it good that I took part in your communion? It will be too late. We have lost the chance. 
and because we were frightened to take part in the communion of Christ's body and blood, to lose the blessing, or because we weren't fearful, frightened, to take part in the communion of Christ's body and blood, and for us to lose everything, for us judgment to fall upon us. Since the morning, Christ is laboring to convince us how to live these later days. Only my brethren seeking the Lord. And there is a time to seek for the Lord. There is a time. And the time is now. And the time to seek the Lord and with a precise way to seek. I will not pray now what to do with my job. I will not pray what to do with the work of God now. Where will I go now? Should I or shouldn't I? But now is a time to seek the Lord. To say, Lord, please make me worthy to take part. And for it to be a blessing to me and not condemnation. And let the later things for later and the rest for later. It will not be the time when I go home, Lord, reveal to me, was it good that I took part in your Holy Communion? There's no point then. That's why our prayer needs to be every day, for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Let's not leave time go by, and for it to go by and to be lost. We don't want time to be lost. We want to buy out time. Because days are evil. That's what the Gospel of Jesus Christ says. Buying out time because the days are evil. All of us, therefore, today, now, this moment, we will rise and ask from God to find grace from God for Him to forgive us all our sins, to sanctify us, to take away what we lack, our weaknesses, our mistakes, and to establish us worthy so we can take part in a blessing and not in judgment in the communion of Christ's body and blood. Don't pray now for your father, your mother, your children, or for the work of God, or the church even. Now is not the time for this prayer. Now is the time to pray for yourself, for the body and blood of Christ, for the blessing of God. And you, the time will come when you will pray for every other thing, but all in time, not out of time. Only the word of God is prayed in time. Our prayer is done in time. In the right time, we should pray. In the right time for everything we pray for. Amen. Things are getting serious. Things that are happening all around us are new. All the signs have been fulfilled. Jerusalem, Euphrates is drying up. Evil of man has increased. Sin has multiplied. Wars are happening all around. And if we think, just before, in Afghanistan, in Serbia, all around us, and things are getting uglier and uglier. And you know, my beloved brethren, every time in humanity, when there is someone who's ruling the planet, then great things are happening in the work of God. Nebuchadnezzar, he ruled the planet when he put the Jews in exile. Kiros was a leader in the planet when he made them return. Alexander the Great ruled the planet and he gave out the Greek language throughout the world and for the gospel to be preached in Greek. The grandson of Nebuchadnezzar ruled the planet when he brought catastrophe in Babylon. And now, Bush rules the planet. God works. The work of God progresses. Times are bringing us closer to Christ. Everything is taking place. Everything has happened. The armies 
which the Bible says they're going to be in Jerusalem. They have started. But now, my brethren, in the world that we are living in, under these circumstances, God wants to renew our relationship with Him. He wants us to come nearer to Him. What does that mean? Closer to His will. Closer to His will. No matter who you are, how you are, what your name is, what your life is, student, child, older, new in Christ, old in Christ, young, old, God wants to bring us closer to Him. Closer to Him. Strongly in His will and His work, as Christ was, my food was to do the will of God and finish His work. And to me, this to be, and to you, my brethren, in our everyday life, always, continuously, your food, not to be to assure the safety of your children. God would do that. Your food, personal food, your work, personal work, is to do the will of God and to finish the work in which God has entrusted you with. Because it's very, very easy for a heart to go away, to depart. I'm not saying for us to lose the kingdom of heaven, but with all assurance we will lose our reward. It will not be full, and there is danger for us to lose everything. There is danger for us to be saved through fire. I don't think you want this. You hope this for you, or your family, or for even for me, or me for you. That's why, my brethren, we hope, and we pray, and we plead, and beg God to fix our hearts, and to bring it in that place in which He is pleased with, with one goal, the glory of God. Amen. Now, my brethren, with fear and trembling, we shall stand before the Lord, to work our salvation with respect and reverence. Christ is in our midst. He's our shepherd. He's our friend. But He's also the Lord of all hosts with respect and reverence before God to take part in blessing in the holy communion of Christ's body and blood. Let's rise, my brethren. For one minute we shall pray, each one of us separately, for all the things Christ said to us today. And no elders come now to pray all together.